you can't be taught patience. It's something you normally have to experience and learn as an individual. Sifu, however, is a very good teacher on the subject. Sifu is only the second game from developer Slowclap, and with it they've firmly established their own flavour of punishing difficulty that runs from the same vein as Dark Souls. And the first lesson you'll learn is that charging in recklessly and button mashing isn't how you're meant to play Sifu. I don't make the comparison to Dark Souls lightly, Sifu is a lot of learning the enemy's patterns, knowing what attacks you can dodge and what attacks you can block and parry from. But if you know you lack patience for such dynamics in combat, I can tell you that the easy mode was built just for you. You can still say you finished the game with that mode, but it's not going to hold as much weight as tackling it on normal. I'm not trying to demean those that like an easy experience. My first full run of Sifu was done on easy because I can get impatient and angry once I fail in the same spot too many times. But when I beat the final boss on normal, even when compared to beating it on easy, I had that euphoric sensation, that rush from breaking down that barrier with my own knowledge and skill. I'm also okay with knowing that there's people out there who have shown much more patience with memorizing the enemy's combos and have ripped off perfect runs without aging or dying once, even on hard mode, which is a kettle of fish I can confidently say isn't for me. If there's anything bad for me to say about Sifu, it's mostly the nitpicky criticisms I've got around small elements on the outskirts of the greater experience. For example, when the enemy does a large arcing swing, like a roundhouse kick, it feels like the blow is going straight through their friendlies and only hitting me, the player character. Feels a little bullshit on the higher difficulties when I've been backed into a corner and for some reason, I'm the only one being hit, even though I'm surrounded by three people. At least it's more consistent when it comes to the melee weapons, on some occasions. It's a similar type of problem to the timing of the dodge with the big dudes when they go to grab you. Like, Jesus Christ, I swear I slip it sometimes, but I still just have to take the massive health hit anyway because it wasn't frame perfect enough. Outside of the combat, I feel like there's a lack in the story department. Not in the matter of content, but in the way it's told and its themes are communicated to the player. I think I've pieced the broader themes together, but that's only a maybe because I've seen the true ending and done a bit of digging into the concept of wood that Sifu pushes in that true ending. Wood, if I'm even saying that right, as far as I can tell, is a Buddhist concept that's entrenched into Kung Fu, broadly preaching the good ideal of turning the other cheek. Knowing you can beat an enemy so badly that they'll die, but refusing to and showing them mercy instead of ending their life then and there pulling back at the edge of the cliff, as it were. I think that point itself is shown beautifully in the final boss fight when you're going for that true ending, but the ultimate point it's trying to make rings completely hollow when it's only five of the several hundred people you fight that you can actually spare. You get the option to spare their lives. Like, you legitimately maim and murder shit tons of people as you walk through to the boss fights, but you can ultimately spare the core group of people who brought you pain and suffering, so I guess that's completely fine. It does have a nice after credits sequence with the true ending, and like I said, it reinforces the ideals of Wood much better than running through the game killing everyone you come across. But the message is still greatly dampened by the hallways filled with broken bodies that you've left in your wake. But it's the process of breaking those bodies that'll keep you playing Sifu, and the artistry of Park Mei is pretty cool to watch. One thing I found interesting while researching for the whole video was the difference between what most people would recognize as Kung Fu and the distinct style of Park Mei that's been mocapped for Sifu. Now, I'm not an expert on this topic and I have no one close to me with Chinese ancestry that I can actually quiz on if I'm getting any of this right, so take what I say with a grain of salt and don't be too quick to grab the pitchforks if I do get something wrong. Traditional Kung Fu, like the styles used in the Shaolin Temple, are from the northern family of martial arts in China in the broad umbrella that is martial arts as a defined word. The Shaolin Kung Fu style focuses mainly on having a lower center of gravity and relying on the use of your legs a lot more. It's a lot more kicking and jumping from what I can see. 
Park Mei is from southern China and is an overall more upright style focused on throwing hands. But they do of course still use kicks in moderation. It's cited in some writings as the natural precursor to Wing Chun, made famous by Ip Man. If you've seen the movies with Donnie Yen, that's the dude. And even Wing Chun itself is the groundwork for Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do. So Park Mei, it's got a little bit of a little bit of royalty in its blood, you might say. That's a whole lot of words that I just threw out there, but all you need to know is that despite not looking like what you might think traditional Kung Fu is meant to look like, the fighting in Sifu is still under the broad umbrella of Kung Fu, and it'll still fuck you up if you ain't careful. If my eyes haven't quite failed me yet, I dare say there's even some elements of Muay Thai and more all-rounder mixed martial arts sneaking into Sifu as well, not in regards to the player character, but in regards to the enemies. For example, the disciple enemy type has a lot of Muay Thai elements in it, I think, just based off how they throw their knees and have that explosive palm strike that always fucks up my battle cadence. Then you've also got the bodyguard boys, these big stocky lads. They've definitely had a bit of training in multiple styles, especially jujitsu with the way they tackle your player character to the ground. And also how they wind up to throw a hook to the body. If you don't think that's kickboxing or some sort of boxing foundation work, yeah, you've never seen someone throw a hook, have you? I'd be pretty confident in saying that the devs had an eye for detail animating the exact moves for each type of enemy you face and even the moves you as the player can use. Kinda like how the sound design team had an ear for the horizontal transitionings in the OST when you've progressed in a boss fight. Horizontal transitioning, to quickly explain, is when the internal sound director uses a brief mixing or transitional beat to cover up the game switching between two different songs or two distinct parts of the same song. Here, let me see if I can showcase it real quick. This is about to get fun. This is Kuroki, third boss in the game, probably my favorite boss theme in the soundtrack. Have a quick listen so you can grasp the general beat of her theme. Notice the sharp whispering rasp of something metallic against the cymbal. <laughs> That little rasp is ever so slightly offbeat to my ear, but that fact makes it a bit more obvious to you when the fight moves into the second phase and the score shifts on an axis to having what sounds like a blunted triangle keeping that 4-4 beat. Some people will finish this boss fight a bit quicker than others, so timing that beat change to the second phase can't exactly be pre-written into the song. They need to mask it with silence or some other noise to cover up the fact that something changed in the sonic tonality of what you're hearing. At the same time, some people might take a bit longer to finish the boss fight, so each section of this particular song, or from any video game really, needs to be easily looped back in on itself without getting annoying to the player trying to enjoy the game. Game composers are built different, fam, and it's even more impressive when a composer like Howie Lee, the talent behind this OST, is doing so well on their very first try. Like the example I just gave with Kuroki's boss theme, I can apply that to each boss in the game. Did you notice how the first phase of that song has a much more subdued and less impactful kick on the drum? Then the second phase picks up after a little flourish of the flutes to bring back a more beefy and dare I say warlike version of the same drum kick? There's layers to the music behind Sifu and they're tied thematically to moments in the game. Like this track, Isolated in Nature, is one of the only tracks that uses flutes as the main piece rather than a supporting instrument which I can easily tie to the fact that the boss fight happens in a bamboo forest. Woodwind instruments for a fight in the forest? 
makes sense to me. I'd say that the music for Sifu is actually split into sections according to the levels because some of the tracks are extremely distinct compared to one another. This is the thing that impresses me about Sifu's soundtrack. Because it's split up into sections that are relatively unique to one another, it enhances the feeling of each level in and of itself. The club level doesn't feel like the stacks, which doesn't feel like museum, which doesn't feel like the tower. Never mind the fact that all the levels are also visually separate from one another as well. Museum is probably my favorite visually with its buildup on the art gallery vibe and the later perspective shifts that happen when you jump the railing that leads into the straight up beautifully artistic section of the level. Like, look at this fight. It's bloody gorgeous. The way the level flashes to a warmer colour akin to blood only when someone's been hit? Ooh. One thing I can wholeheartedly praise Sifu for is the natural evolution to the bosses and how they both teach and examine you on particular aspects of a boss fight. For example, Bearded Mute over here, he's your starter, he's the gatekeeper to see if you can handle the rest of the game. But once you get to Sean, He's specifically testing you on if you can grasp that dodging is better than blocking if your enemy is holding a weapon. Kuroki further reinforces that mentality in her first phase, but primarily is used to narrow down your timing when blocking and dodging because the way she delays and mixes up said timings. It's a good way to completely bugger me up and ensure my death multiple times in this one boss fight. Bell Lady, no, I don't actually know her name, is your skill test when it comes to managing distance because she is fucking deadly at range. That little sweep and slam she can do? Painful. Plenty of health just disappeared. So getting in close is the best strategy, but that doesn't mean she's completely vulnerable. She can still give you a pushback and create that distance that she utilizes oh so well. Then you get to the final boss, Yang. This motherfucker can basically mirror your moveset and straight up has several attacks that can break your block. So you better get out of the way of that one. Plus, there's also a few moves up his sleeve that you've never even seen before, like that rush from distance move that you need to be aware of if you have a hope in hell of dodging it at all. Yang is my favorite fight, not because I'm a sucker for a final boss where said final boss is essentially a mirror image of the player character, but because he is exactly what a final boss should be. The equivalent to a final exam. The true test to see if you've been paying attention to the journey Sifu has put you through. There are more good points to Sifu that I can mention than there are bad points I can nitpick. Much like how my members keep finding reasons to fund these exercises in my ability to ramble. Mayor Hairbear, Sir Thor the Swede, and of course, our band of crazies, John and young Professor Utonium. Hopefully y'all noticed the slightly higher degree of quality in this particular edit. I do be trying to improve my craft. If this video persuaded you to give Sifu a look, you can find links in the description that will take you to all the major platforms so you can buy it yourself, alongside my Nexus store, which also helps me keep this channel running day to day. 
Uh, not every game in the world is on the Nexus, but there's there's enough on there that you should be able to pick and choose and give your boy a little bit of kickback if you so wanted to. Uh, if you've played C for yourself, what was your favorite part of it? Like your favorite boss or your particular arena that you were harried into? Um, my favorite arena probably is going to be the long corridor from the museum level. Uh, something about it just spoke to me a little bit more than anything else. Although a very close second is the opening floor as you enter the club when the OST kicks up to like that, just that sick club electro beat. Mm, mm, mwah, good stuff. Um, in regards to the next video, I know what I'm going to do. It is currently being worked on. You'll find out what it is very soon, but all you need first is just a little bit of patience. See you in the next one. Ciao.